Welcome. You are listening to The Culture Climate on the Sister Speak Show, where contemporary meets vision, sound, and action, a talk show for great minds that create, inspire, impact, and evolve. Sister, spiritual inspiration shared through the arts. Sister, spiritual inspiration shared through Ayana. But you better call me Sister Speak. How you living? How you breathing? How you vibing? How you standing as a warrior? What's good? I just want to thank everybody for tuning in to tonight's episode or whenever you choose to listen to this on the culture climate where we are raising the temperature in controversial conversations. And you see tonight's episode is heavy, 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 and we're going to get into it momentarily, but let's go through the formalities so we can get all the, you know, cordialities in the way and out of the way. I want to thank all of my faithful listeners, all of my international listeners. I'm talking about Cambodia, Turkey, Tanzania, Mozambique. I'm talking about Texas, North Carolina, Philly, Virginia, Cali. All over, and I don't mean to miss anybody. I see through my statistics who's listening, and I am grateful for every single one of you who truly listen to the Sister Speak Show and who truly rock with me. Okay, I really do. You don't have to listen, but you choose to, and I greatly appreciate you. You are valued in my heart. And I mean that. I really appreciate you. To my first time listeners, thank you so much. I just want to go ahead and let you know that the Sister Speak Show is rated R for strong language, thoughts, and ideas. First and last warning. That means that you have entered (laughs) at your own risk. And hopefully you will be bold enough and brave enough to just, you know, see what this is podcast is about, you know, and maybe you'll allow us to be the flavor in your ear and a part of your podcast shuffle. And I mean that. I thank you all so much. On the Sister Speak show, you need to met two things. You need to drink water consistently. That has to be a part of your everyday intake. It is absolutely 100% vital. It is a vital piece of your journey as far as to help equip you in warding off the wiles of the devil, enduring your journey, being able to think clearly, providing the sustenance that every single part of your body needs. Okay. And scuba gear, because we do dive deep to different leagues of the sea, if you will. And I don't want you to be left behind and I want you to have the right gear on so you can keep up with what we've got going on. I am really grateful to have the opportunity to get on the microphone and actually be have the gift to get on the microphone and actually have something to say. That's why I am Sister Speak. And in that, 
we're not going to, you know, delay this episode any further. We're going to go ahead and get right into it. This episode on the culture climate is the brown cop. And you see, looking at the cover photo, that I have it as an acronym because I believe that COP stands for Can't Operate Professionally. There's a difference between a police officer and a cop, period. And if you don't believe that, that's on you, but that's just the truth of the matter. And let me just go ahead and finish the title. I'm already getting into it, and I can't even just get, get through the title, so to speak. The brown cop can't operate professionally. The virus in police brutality. We're going to get into it. We're going to get into this because it's the audacity of ego, arrogance, and being high off of power. And we're talking about with a lowercase p. And with the Tyree Nichols beating and then him passing away three days later is a cause for alarm. But it's a cause for alarm that has been going on for a long time, centuries of this abuse, this spirit of abuse. And the brown cop. Not the brown police officer, but the brown cop is dangerous. Dangerous, no matter what state, no matter what precinct, no matter what jurisdiction, no matter what beat. The brown cop, no matter what part of the department he's in, no matter what unit he is a part of, he is dangerous, corrupt, evil, has no regard for any of the oaths training and protocols and procedures that he is supposed to abide by as a public servant. We're talking about the brown cop. We're not talking about the white cop, so-called white cop. We're talking about the brown cop this evening. Mm -mm. We're not going to, we're not even going to, I hope I don't. I don't know how this conversation, where it may go. You know, I don't want to put a seatbelt on this one, (laughs) but we must focus on what is going on in our village because Tyree, there are several brothers and sisters who have encountered the brown cop or the brown cops and, and it, well, would you look at there? There are sirens in the background live from where I live right now. Mm, mm, mm. Mm-hmm. This is serious this evening. This is a 911. I should have put 911 on the cover page, and I probably will by the yeah, I I will do this because you all this is on, on demand. I'll have definitely have 911 on the cover. But this is a 911 for real. The brown cop, many brothers and sisters have encountered, and they have testimonies and statements, witness accounts of how shit went left, how it was fuckery, how it was a whole bunch of out of line, inappropriate behaviors that took place because they could, not because of anything. It's just because they could. And this is, You know, you say, well, when is enough enough? Well, you know, that's a good question. That's a good question. And we're going to dive into it because this evil that we have amongst each other is so, it's sinful. It destroys the ambiance of what we are as a chosen people, it just really creates a level of dysfunction and dismantles the whole process of who we are as a people and how we are supposed to conduct ourselves no matter where you work, no matter where you live, that the honor 
that we are supposed to have amongst each other and how we're supposed to treat each other is supposed to follow us wherever we go. But it doesn't. Not all. You know? And you can only do so much. But the scorpion unit. Oh, these brown cops. These niggas. Because that's what they are. That's what you are. These particular niggas have been on the prowl and have been doing what the fuck they have been wanting to do for a while. And so that says to me and to you, because I know my listening audience is intelligent, that this corruption with the Memphis PD is... An ongoing thing. This is nothing new. And you have to look at the entire police department. I don't care who we're looking at. We're looking at the entire police department. And how could these niggas be let loose on the street to conduct bad business? Bad business. Not even serving the public properly. Not even going in agreement with what Scorpion Unit even stood for. And that's not, there's more than one Scorpion Unit. So I have some clips that I am really excited about for educational purposes only under the Copyright Act of 1976. This is just to educate my brothers and sisters and raise awareness and hopefully provide solutions. Oh my goodness. Do not disturb. And hopefully providing awareness and solutions for these pollutions because this demonic activity has led to yet another death. So who polices the cops? Who stands up? See, there has to be... See, there's what we see, and then there's what really goes on in there. The camaraderie, the secrets, the cover-ups, the scandals, the scams, the the bodies that are still missing, that have gone missing due to the, the, the lack of professional operations going on in the police units. There's a lot of untold secrets. There's a lot of things that go on that are far worse than what have met the public eye and the public awareness. More egregious acts, more situations where you're like, you know, like where you're like, are you serious? So I don't know how long this episode is going to be. I don't. But what I do know is that these news clips are about 20 23 minutes and in 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 the news clips you're also going to catch a little break where i provide a clip about what an actual scorpion is now i'm not saying you all don't know what a scorpion is but i had to put it in there because you're always going to catch those nuggets those gems that insight with which which you can then link correlate and assimilate and and kind of not not assimilate but find a similarity in what a scorpion is and the behaviors of, right, with how the scorpion unit moved. And I'm talking about the particular scorpion unit in Memphis, okay? I am an advocate for blowing the whistle on bullshit. I'm an advocate for the truth setting us free because that's scripture and the truth is just what it is. I'm an advocate for scandals and scams to be exposed and, you know, that pollution having a solution. I'm for the litter being picked up and you should be too because there is no justification in Tyree Nichols not being alive. None. 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 There's none. Okay? And I have an issue 
with people who possess power, lowercase p, and get puffed up in it and then go around creating snares and pits for their own people. Taking advantage of a position and not even having a mind to have hold a moral compass that says, I need to stop. This isn't right. I'm wondering if some of these brothers, if these brothers were born, were not born with this isn't right. Because this isn't right is is a brain cell. And I'm wondering if that brain cell is absent from their minds. That there's nothing in you at any point of the time, of, excuse me, any, any point in the day, any time that something pricks at your conscience and convicts you of your actions. Something that makes you say, I need to stop operating in an unprofessional manner. I need to stop acting like a cop and actually be a police officer. Do you have nightmares? Do you see the faces of your victims? I wonder if these niggas, because I, I, to call them brothers right now is, you know, they, I can't. Not, I, not right now. But I just wonder if you can really just, do you see Tyree's face? In your dreams, in your nightmares. I hope you do have nightmares. I mean that. I hope you are haunted daily. I hope you experience supernatural activity that leads you to get down on your knees and repent for being a demon. A de- uh, to, to, to being a son of Satan. Your daddy is the devil. Uh, it has to be. That's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping that you get no rest. I'm hoping that every inch of your life, you know, you just experience torment for what you all did. That's the only way. There cannot be any other way. It has to be that way. I hope you don't get any special treatment. None of that. I hope you go through the nightmare season. Because popping out and fucking with your own people, that shit ain't cool. What makes you any different than the oppressor? And I'm speaking about that as far as the culture of wickedness, of terroristic acts in the homeland of United States of America, not my homeland, but you know, this homeland of United States of America, real shit, real talk. Anyway, brothers and sisters, we're going to get right into it. I got a couple commercials that I'm going to take. That's where we're going on the sister speak show. I do what I do. You all do what you do. And that's how we're able to, you know, have this conversation, this controversial conversation, the Brown 911, the Brown cop can't operate professionally the virus in police brutality we will be back after these commercial breaks thank you so much you are listening to the sister speak show where contemporary meets vision sound and action a talk show for great minds that create inspire impact and evolve You are listening to The Culture Climate on the Sister Speak Show, raising the temperature in controversial conversations. There are no limits or boundaries when it comes to exposing and investigating the truth. There must be solutions for the pollutions in our village. Your vacation is on the way. 
you're going with your girls, your guys, your man, your woman, and you're not expecting to have any chaos, calamity, disturbance, or turbulence. You're ready to relax, rest, and rejuvenate. But sometimes plans don't go as we want them to. This is the cautionary tale of when mean girls travel the world and Dominican Republic vacation nightmares. Rated R for strong language, thoughts, and ideas on the Suspense Files on the System Speak show. A mother's love is always needed and appreciated when it is given in the right way. But there are some mothers who love their sons in the wrong way, crossing boundaries and not respecting the role that she has as a mother. Creating scenes and scenarios and demanding time from her son, no matter who the woman is in his life. She will assert and insert herself into situations that are not her business, causing her son to grow up no good for any other woman. Is that the plan? Your son is not your husband. Available under men now on the vent session on the Sister Speak show. Welcome back. I am your host, Sister Speak. I hope you all are ready for these clips that are, once again, for educational purposes only. These clips are to raise awareness, as I forementioned, about the virus in police brutality from the brown cop. I'll see you on the other side of these clips. Thank you for being a wonderful listening audience. Let's get it. Let's go. into the investigation of the death of Tyree Nichols. Two more Memphis officers have now been relieved of duty and three Memphis fire personnel are now out of their jobs. ABC's Justin Finch has the story. Far from over, the Shelby County District Attorney telling ABC News his office is carrying out a thorough investigation of Tyree Nichols' death. We are looking at everybody. Memphis police announcing two more officers have been relieved of duty in the Nichols case and identifying Officer Preston Hemphill. Now on leave pending investigation, Hemphill is seen on his body camera deploying his taser at Nichols during that initial traffic stop. After hearing Nichols was reported found nearby, Hemphill heard saying, oh, stop it. Hemphill's attorney says he did not go to that second location where Nichols was beaten and is cooperating with investigators. But Nichols' family is wondering why Hemphill was not identified sooner, releasing a statement saying, it certainly begs the question why the white officer involved in this brutal attack was shielded and protected from the public eye and to date from sufficient discipline and accountability. Five now fired police officers, all black, face second degree murder charges. The Memphis Fire Department announcing two medics, Jamichael Sandridge and Robert Long, and their lieutenant, Michelle Whitaker, have been fired for failing to adequately assess Nichols on scene after he was beaten January 7th. Nichols died three days later. On Capitol Hill, the Nichols case renewing calls for new police reform legislation. We should have simple legislation that we can agree upon. We owe it to all of the families who have lost loved ones in these horrible acts of brutality. 
And Tyree Nichols' family is now preparing for his funeral tomorrow here in Memphis. His mother saying she's determined to get justice for her son. Justin Finch, ABC News, Memphis. Why doesn't every home in Texas have solar panels? Surrounding the incident report that officers turned in hours after Tyree Nichols was beaten. The report obtained by ABC News tells the story of a, quote, irate suspect. The officer writing, quote, detectives gave verbal commands to stop resisting. And then the suspect, Tyree Nichols, grabbed for Detective Martin's gun. But the video released last Friday doesn't show Nichols ever reaching for an officer's gun. The district attorney promising a thorough investigation. We're just looking at everybody, you know, even people that were uh, filing reports afterwards. We're making sure that we have done a comprehensive investigation. And the investigation thus far resulting in another two officers being relieved of duty, including white officer Preston Hemphill, seen on his body camera footage deploying his taser at Nichols. Nichols' family saying it certainly begs the question why the white officer involved in this brutal attack was shielded and protected from the public eye and to date from sufficient discipline and accountability. Memphis police telling ABC News it is protocol to immediately release names of officers fired, not relieved of duty. Hemphill has not been charged. As Tyree Nichols' family prepares to say their final goodbyes, renewed calls for police reform. President Biden says it's time. Do you still think George Floyd Act is the most reasonable legislation to get through a divided Congress? I think we should do it right now. Tyree Nichols will be laid to rest tomorrow. Vice President Kamala Harris will travel to Memphis to attend the funeral service. What? One of the five officers that has been charged is from Bloomfield, Connecticut, which is why we're here tonight. Desmond Mills Jr. again is one of those five officers facing several charges in connection to Tyree Nichols' death. And today, Bloomfield Public Schools released a statement saying that they are aware of the disturbing situation involving five officers in Memphis, Tennessee, and can confirm that one of the officers, Desmond Mills Jr. is a graduate of Bloomfield High School's class of 2008. Mills and the other four officers are charged with second-degree murder, aggravated assault, aggravated kidnapping, official misconduct, and official oppression. The footage of the traffic stop that led to Tyree Nichols' death is set to be released later tonight. And ahead of that, rallies and protests have been planned here in Connecticut for tomorrow, including in Manchester, led by Power Up CT. The idea is that, yes, we do. Because this system killed Tyree Nichols. We're not looking at just five officers. We're looking at a system who consistently kills black men, black boys, black women, and black girls, and black bodies. Now, again, Power Up CT is just one of the groups that is planning protests for tomorrow. There is also another protest planned in Hartford for tomorrow afternoon. So we will keep you updated on that and we'll keep you updated as this video is released later tonight. Live in Bloomfield, Gabby Molina, Fox 61 News. Women are tired of these people, these men that we birthed in the world. Killing our babies. But nothing. In a Channel 2 Action News exclusive, we're hearing from the grandmother of Tyree Nichols. She lives here in Metro Atlanta now, and this is the first time she's speaking out since her grandson's death. Channel 2's Audrey Washington live in Midtown Atlanta. And Audrey, the grandmother told you she can't bear to even watch that police body cam video. Right, she still has not seen that video in its entirety, only short clips on the news. But she told me today that she is coming forward for the first time because she wants people to know exactly who her son Tyree, her grandson Tyree, was. It said to grandma from Ty, age 13. This is all Miss Johnny LaRae Honeycutt has left. Memories and old pictures of her grandson, Tyree Nichols. She says at times, the grief is overwhelming. <sighs> I'm sorry. In January, 29-year-old Tyree Nichols died after Memphis police officers beat him during a traffic stop. Following the release of the police body cam video and after officials charged five officers involved with murder, protests broke out across the nation and here in Metro Atlanta. Ms. Honeycutt says she can't bear to watch the entire video. She's only seen one still image. Until when that child is worried and he was scared, I looked in his eye and I saw 
what he was saying without him saying a word. Help me. What did I do? Thursday inside her Metro Atlanta home, I asked Miss Honeycutt what message she had for the officers seen in the video. Killing our babies for nothing. My baby was a skateboarder. He worked at FedEx. He had the best mother and stepfather in the world. Why would you want to do that to him? Next, Tyree Nichols' grandmother plans to turn her pain into purpose. She wants other grandparents of grandchildren who died during similar police interactions to take their heartbreak and voices to lawmakers in Washington. We need to come now on Washington, D.C. As for what she wants to say to her grandson. You know, you got a family that loves you and everything is going to be just fine. You don't have to worry about these people here anymore. And Ms. Honeycutt told me that she actually prays for the officers charged with her grandson's murder. And we are here live in Midtown Atlanta, Audrey Washington, Channel 2 Action News. Hi, I mean, Audrey, I'm just wondering, going through this private heartbreak, but those images are everywhere. Right. You know, when we cover these stories, we forget that there are real people behind these headlines. Uh, she told me that she is just taking it emotionally day by day. Linda? Audrey Washington, thank you. I was not trying to be scared, but I was scared. All eyes are on the Memphis Police Department Scorpion Unit after the death of Tyree Nichols. Now, more people who say they were also the victims of overly aggressive officers assigned to that unit are coming forward. Tonight, WREG's April Thompson spoke with a 19-year-old who says he was stopped while just walking down the street. Maurice Chalmers Stokes prefers not to show his face out of fear of retaliation but he is very forthcoming about what happened to him the evening of October 1st, 2022. I was not trying to be scared, but I was scared. He says he was walking down Chelsea Avenue near University Street when unmarked cars started following him. Those inside had on ski masks. They had that a bomb with me. I was like, let me take your backpack. Don't try to run. But he ran out of fear. Or he ended up taking off running. I had bounced off a gate. When I bounced off the gate, I hit my head on the gate. I didn't know who they was. They was in unmarked cars, like regular cars like us. So I'm not thinking, y'all know police officers are top anyway. I'm already scared for my life. He would soon learn those chasing him were police. This affidavit says the officers were assigned to MPD's Scorpion Team 1. On that team, Four officers who've been in the spotlight over the killing of Tyree Nichols, Detectives D. Haley, D. Mills, and T. Bean. The same officers now fired and charged in the Tyree Nichols case. And also P. Hemphill, who is still under investigation. Chalmers Stokes says he had to speak out when he realized what happened, especially when he realized Demetrius Haley was one of the officers who caught him. He grabbed me my backpack and pushed me to the gate again. Cut my, my head up. Demetrius, when he flew me over, yeah, like he was going to punch me. Chalmers Stokes says he was never told why police were chasing him, and he complained about his head injury, but got no attention. His attorney, Andre Wharton, says the glare of the Tyree Nichols story is shining light on more cases that deserve attention. The Constitution speaks of unreasonable searches and seizures. This is totally unreasonable. The same thing happened to Tyree Nichols that happened to Maurice just months before. And he questions discrepancies, he says, are in the police report that officers filled out. With the, um, the medical attention, him, uh, Maurice refusing medical attention, that did not happen. Uh, I don't know why that was put in there. Now they hope to talk to city officials about this case, too. We don't want this to happen to somebody else. And so um, he, he sought counsel, and we're looking at exploring all means, including the internal affairs investigation. April Thompson, WREG News Channel 3. Now, Maurice Chalmers Stokes was charged with theft of property after a stolen gun was found in his backpack following that stop. Wharton is not representing him on that criminal charge and says the stop itself was still unwarranted and without cause.
Clyde fired Memphis police officers hadn't been with MPD long, and police haven't told us what units they worked with during their time on the force. But some who know the officers say at least one confirmed he, and we're hearing several, were with the newly created Scorpion Squad that MPD started in 2021 as a solution to fight crime. Their job is to identify the target area, flood that area with officers, and suppress crime in that area, mostly by visibility. Just being present and having the officers there, it sees an impact on it. And this audio from Broadcastify of police radio traffic the night of Tyree Nichols' beating specifically mentions calling more Scorpion units to the scene. You know, the Scorpion car pulled over to East Ranger Road, have one running on foot. Cornell McKinney says the same Scorpion unit stopped him January 3rd, four days before Nichols was pulled over. I actually read it on the back of their they vest. It said uh, MPD Scorpion unit. It was at this Marathon gas station at Ridgeway in Knight Arnold as he was catching a ride with a friend. All I heard is, uh, freeze, get out the car. Put your, put your MF hands up before I blow your heads off. Both of you, get out the car. So put your hands up. So I put my hands up. And one of the officers proceeded to come to the car, and uh, he physically pulled me out by my shoulder with a gun no more than a foot away from my head. He says the officers in unmarked cars would never say why they had been stopped. He took this picture of the stop. They eventually asked who the drugs belonged to. I said, man, I just went across the street to get a pizza, and I'm on my way back to the house. He's like, uh, well, who been the rabbit is found? I said, uh, well, can we call my lawyer? And the officers, uh, he yelled out, well, this ain't court, this ain't a time for lawyer. I was like, man, I just came to get a pizza. So he was like, man, we just playing, it ain't a pound in a car. And he let me walk off. He showed us his call log when he says he placed two phone calls to MPD's internal affairs to complain about the officer's forcefulness. But he says he still hasn't heard back. Then he saw the picture of the five officers fired in the Tyree Nichols case. I was like, that's them. I said, that's crazy. That's them. I said, now they don't really hurt somebody. This could have been prevented if the Eternal Affairs took action like I was asking them to do. We asked Memphis police about the stop involving Cornell McKinney and are also waiting to hear back. Those who know some of the officers are waiting to see how all of this plays out. Former Shelby County Sheriff's Captain Benny Cobb says he has spoken with one of the fired officers who he coached years ago. It's been a roller coaster ride. Uh, for, emotionally for him, he's been in my office. Uh, I prayed with him a couple of times, shared some information with him. And it's, and now, uh, as a result of termination, there are more questions that's being asked. I, I know the human person. Now, uh, if, if he's geared to what he's accused of and what he's been terminated for, of course, justice has to be served. April Thompson, WREG News Channel 3. And as April mentioned, we are working to get more information from MPD about the stop involving Cornell McKinney and also the fired officer's involvement with the Scorpion unit. For those like very first predators to walk on land, they outlasted the dinosaurs. Scorpions. About 1,500 species in all, living on every continent except Antarctica. Of that 1,500, only a few dozen are potentially lethal to human beings. And of those, this one, the Indian red scorpion, takes the prize as the most lethal of all. The Indian red is tiny. It's no bigger than a cigarette lighter. But it possesses a potent elixir. And when it lives near people, it often takes shelter where they do. In countries like India, scorpion stings are a serious public health issue, particularly among children. For the unclad foot of an unwary youngster can lead to a painful, and in some cases, if left untreated, deadly sting. Scorpions are arachnids, just like spiders, ticks, and mites. They have four pairs of legs for walking, a pair of pincers for grabbing and holding prey, and mouth parts known as chelicery used to chew food. The body tapers, ending at their infamous stinger. But despite their rather fearsome reputation, they usually only sting as a last resort. Scorpions are shy, nocturnal animals that usually lie in wait for their prey. 
and once their victim is captured, either clasped in the scorpion's pincers or poisoned by a deadly sting, like this roach, digestive fluids turn the meal to liquid that can be sucked into the scorpion's stomach. And what's left is cast aside. Of the Memphis Police Department and Scorpion Unit. The name stands for Street Crimes Operations to Restore Peace in Our Neighborhoods. These units typically focus on targeting violent criminals in high crime areas. In his statement, Chair Pat Labatt called the actions of the Memphis officers heinous and said that they, quote, have cast dishonor and suspicion on the title Scorpion. Labatt says that his office is also reviewing operations and training protocols, and it's not known what changes the department will make or when the name change may go into effect. Demetrius Haley is one of five officers that have been fired from the department following Nichols' arrest and death. This afternoon, another man claims he was beaten by Haley. WRG Shea author is live with that information. Shea? Yeah, these allegations come from a lawsuit from several years ago where a man claims that he was beaten by Haley so bad he passed out. Justice for Tyree. Justice for Tyree. Before these chants. Justice for Tyree. Justice for Tyree. A now former inmate at the Shelby County Corrections Center claims he too was beaten by the same officer now fired following the death of Tyree Nichols. The case goes back to 2016, when he filed a federal lawsuit against Demetrius Haley, who worked at the correction center. The handwritten lawsuit claims officers came in for a random search after believing they saw smoke coming from the area. The man alleged he was strip searched in a restroom by Haley and another officer while a sergeant supervised. He claims the officers told him he tried to flush contraband, going on to say Haley and another officer punched him in the face at one point saying the other officer picked him up and slammed him face first into a sink, then to the floor. After that, he passed out, waking up in a medical unit. In 2018, a judge dismissed the case, citing failures by the plaintiff, not submitting necessary information when requested. According to Memphis police, Haley was hired in August of 2020. For now, it's unclear what his role was in the incident earlier this month that landed Tyree Nichols in the hospital and later dead. MPD announced Haley had been terminated last week. And Alex April, we have requested Haley's files from when he worked for Shelby County as well as the city of Memphis right now. We are waiting to hear back. We're live downtown, top, downtown tonight. Shay Arthur, WREG, Channel 3. You are currently listening to The Brown Cop. Can't operate professionally. The virus in police brutality on the Culture Climate, on the Sister Speak Show. You are currently... Vision, 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 vision. Sound, 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 sound. Action, 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 action. Create, create, create. Inspire, inspire, inspire. Impact, impact, impact. Evolve, 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 evolve. You are now, you are now, you are now. Activate, activate, activate. Welcome back. You are listening to The Culture Climate, Raising the Temperature in Controversial Conversations. I am your host, Sister Speak, and I thank you for listening to those clips. I am excited that that was the video curriculum that I was able to find and, you know, of course, listen to myself to make sure that it would really, you know, coincide and be conducive to the conversation that we have to have about the brown cop and the virus in police brutality. We had to know exactly <clears throat> what a scorpion is. Even if we, you know, we've seen one before, some of you may have been, you know, stung by a scorpion before. But we, for the most part, we have seen a scorpion and we know not to play with one because we know of the consequences of their sting. So we avoid scorpions. It's a natural thing to do. And then 
you know, some scorpions can camouflage themselves and before you know it, you know, you've walked up on one and that wasn't your intention, but there you are. And now you're faced with, am I going to be stung by this predator? <laughs> you know, as, as small as it is, it's the sting that can take you out. And that's like a virus, a virus, you know, you can't see it, but it can take you out. And it's that virus in the police department known as police brutality that is, a, you know, for, I guess I'd say for illustration purposes to just say that that sting is what is affecting our brothers and our sisters when they encounter the brown cop. The scorpion. See, there's more scorpions. There's more scorpion individual. How can I say? It? There's more scorpion units than meets the eye, obviously. And I just want to know why that name. You know, it just doesn't. It doesn't really sound good. When I first heard it, I was just like, scorpion unit. What in the gang gang is this? You know, what in the extra fraternity is this? And it's just like out of all the names, you know, I really feel like after doing my research and after being previously aware of police brutality and specifically the brown cop, that you should really call yourselves the rabies unit. I mean, real talk, you should call yourselves the the rabies unit. There is, listening to Tyree experience the brown cops. And knowing that three days later, He would pass away because of the brown cops, the scorpion unit, whose job is to allegedly suppress illegal criminal activity in the community and provide a sense of restoration through proper protocol and professional behavior. They don't give a fuck about a body cam, obviously. You know why? Because you all are going to be able to go back to the precinct and doctor up any type of records that you need to doctor up, lie, and essentially protect each other from the consequences of your actions. That's why. You don't care, you know, and then you've got that extra cop who hasn't yet been, we're still trying to figure out what, what Danny did. And I don't, I know that's not his name, but I'm just saying like, we just need to know, like, did he really, cause he's really a good guy, but these niggas right here. Oh yeah. Fuck them. Get them off the force right now. And uh, as they should be, they should be kicked off. And then so should he. So I'm just trying to, I'm not trying to figure out because to say that would be like, I'm blind and unaware of why I know why (laughs) we know why you know but it's just typical typical politics typical corruption typical bullshit that goes on you know public servants that are are not doing what taxpayer dollars are expecting them to do and then not protecting and serving the community as you said you would What happened to that? Just a bunch of bullshit you knew before you got on the force that you were going to be with the shit. You should have been called with the shit unit. That's what you should have been called. The rabies unit. The with the shit unit. The do what the fuck we want to do unit. 
the I'm a sellout unit, the overseer unit. When I saw the video, you know, and, and, and initially you have to feel me on this. Like it takes, I have to put my energy just like you have to put your listening energy into, we got to endure this. You know, we have to listen to this information. We see the video and there's just some things that's just like, man, I know I've got to produce this. I know I got to put this out, but it's just so hard to watch and listen to sometimes. You know, it's hard to, it's, it's hard to have to see it still to have to even know it exists and then, you know, produce it and go over the clip. It's just a lot. It's a lot to have to, you know, look at it and be like, damn, that's us. That's, 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 there it is. That's our, our people fucking up the village and not caring, you know, not caring at all. So, you know, the actions that are described from these brown cops and what they have done, what they've been doing, you know, when I looked at the video, I was like, damn, this shit is kind of personal. And feel me on what I'm saying. I'm like, I'm looking at just the way they going in on the brother. With no restraint. Told you, no moral compass. That, what's that? You know? And I'm looking at it and I'm like, man, these kicks and these hits are real personal. And then it just hit me. Because I'm really discerning and I'm watching and I'm observing and I'm really just seeing past what's there. I'm looking at the spiritual warfare going on. I'm really just paying attention to these demons moving and at the energy of everything because this is just my gift. And I'm watching it and I'm like, this is that hazing shit. This right here reminds me of the fraternity. And I did an episode that you need to check out, y'all, about hazing. I don't have it loaded up in my commercials. Um, It's in the backlog. But check it out. Just scroll through. It's a good episode about fraternities and sororities. I really went in. Moving forward. And it just reminded me of the hazing that I see And the hazing that we, most of us are aware of and how brutal it is, how demonic it is, how humiliating it is. The, you know, it's like, how do you even think of these things to do? How do you even You all might hear some background noise. People are coming home, but I got to keep recording. How do you even come up with these things to make your brothers and sisters do to prove their loyalty and to join your organization? No filter, no restraint, no, no moral compass. Yet again, I said that that's what I see. And then... Here it was, I'm doing the research, and I see that a, some of these brothers are a part of the Omega Sci-Fi organization. Mm-hmm. Spot on. And that's the organization that likes to bark like a dog. What we saw that night when Tyree was just trying to go home, you niggas, you thugs, is we saw animalistic behavior 
Go figure. I am extremely concerned about a section of our people that are with the shit and have turned their backs on the loyalty that you're supposed to have for our culture. But you're turning up the temperature in the climate, making the climate unconducive to anybody to be able to walk and breathe and make it home and exercise their liberties to actually be pulled over through proper procedure after you have articulate, articulated your reasonable suspicion, after you have explained that this is a detainment, that there are terms, there are behaviors that you niggas are required, you brown cops are required to do when you do what you are doing. You are not required as a public servant. I don't give a fuck what the name of your clique is. Your gang is. Because that's what the fuck it is. You know, what you're not required to do is just do what the fuck you want to do and beat on your fucking brother. Because that's what the fuck you did. And there's a judgment for that. There's a spiritual judgment and a physical judgment. And you're going to go through that shit. Why? Because you've got to get that work. What goes around does come around. It's called you reap what you sow. You cannot prey upon your brothers and sisters illegally. You cannot violate their rights. Your power versus the most high gods. Who the fuck do you think you are? Brown cop? You know who you are? You are someone who cannot operate professionally. It's on video that you can't. We can all see that shit. The kicks, the tasing. You beat him unconscious for fucking what? You could never be able to justify why. That's why y'all had a doctor up that report, you fucking cowards. All of you niggas need to be off the force, including you demons, you deceivers, all of y'all, Esau and Jacob. All y'all niggas need to be off the fucking force. Because what's driving your force? Who is your master? You know, it is a wicked spirit that permeates the atmosphere in many principalities. And these Entities possess people who are in positions of pseudo power and they hunt and they prey upon those who are unsuspecting and suspecting. Anybody can get it at this time, it seems. It don't matter. But there's a particular hatred that brothers have against brothers. Oh, yeah. That brown cop has some issues that come way before he joined the force. Oh, yeah. That brown cop has some issues that are deeply rooted, unresolved, unhealed, and seething through their pores. It is a stench, and that stench has wrapped itself and embraced itself in it in in the brown cop spirit and soul causing the brown cop to be public pollution not a public servant but public pollution you need to know that public fucking pollution a virus that loves I mean you brown cops come off that police brutality that you do it makes you come Mm -hmm. it gets you erect it takes you there it's the climax 
of what you do. To know that you can just fuck with somebody and take their life. And feel as if you're going to be protected because of your affiliations and associations. Let me explain something to you. There is no brown cop on the face of this earth that is not under judgment for their actions. Oh, they may think that they have gotten away with everything that they have done. But, you know, leaning to your own understanding is dangerous. Being a fool is dangerous because I believe that you must but not believe that there is a God, that there is a most high God, that he has a son, Jesus the Christ, Jehovah and his eyes are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. So that means that nobody escapes. There's no secret. There's nothing hidden. There's nothing that you can hide behind your back that the Most High God won't, doesn't know about. And in that, there is a day of reckoning. And I'm hoping that quickly there is an expiration date on the brown cop. Mm hmm. You got to go. Excuse me, I had to cough. There comes a time when. <clears throat> We have to experience like punishment in order to get to repentance. When I saw what the brown cops had done, the scorpion unit, the rabies unit, the with the shit unit, the it, it is what it is unit. When I saw what you all had done, to him, you know. We all saw what he looked like when he was in a coma. Like, when I saw that, I said, that's hate. That's that, that's that skin. That's that colorism. Colorism, okay? The unresolved trauma from being a brown-skinned man. All of those brothers on the force were heavily melanated. Once again, when when you listen to the Sister Speak show, we do go into different thought processes and roots because we got, I mean, you know, we got to get to the root. I'm looking at them. Everybody was of a heavily melanated brown tone. And so we have to bring to the forefront dark skinned men who hate dark skinned men. And I hate to say dark skinned men, but you know, just just rock with me, because I really don't. I don't like for anybody to call me dark skin. I just don't like like light skin. Dark. It's just whatever. Just brown, extremely brown, brown skin, brown brown, the brownest. <laughs> Moving forward, the dark skinned men who hate dark skinned men, dark skinned men who hate themselves, dark skinned men who hate dark. Skin and the effects that it has on their day to day life. That is an intricate part into what we saw as well. If you don't think it isn't, that's because you ain't got on your scuba gear and you don't drink enough water and you can probably just click off. I'm not here ever to speak on any side but the side I'm supposed to speak, but but straight, straightforward. Just straight. Forward. And this issue of 
skin tone is a part of the problem as well. It's an ingredient because you only are going after brown skin men. I, I, every man who had an account, you know, on these videos, they were of a darker hue. What's up with that? What's up with that? You know, it takes me back to the movie with Ice-T, although, you know, the movie Colors. And it just makes me think of, although that was about, you know, gang colors, I'm just thinking about just colors. Colors. Is that what's in y'all? I am a nightmare walking psychopath talking like that's y'all, though. That's y'all. The brown cop. The virus and police brutality. That's y'all. The nightmare walking psychopath talking the scorpion the scorpion a a predator that is having a deadly effect on the human population Why the fuck did you want to become a police officer? But really, though, why? What was it in you? Who, what made you want to become one? That's my question. And what are you like at home? Is your wife a victim? I'm, I believe they should be checking on the wives of every single one of these niggas. Real talk. We'll be right back. You are listening to The Culture Climate on the Sister Speak show. Raising the temperature in controversial conversations. There are no limits or boundaries when it comes to exposing and investigating the truth. There must be solutions for the pollutions in our village. Did you know that the Sister Speak Show has eight segments dedicated to being the flavor in your ear? You might as well go ahead and add us to your podcast shuffle now so you can enjoy the tour, the laugh line, the culture climate, the suspense files, the hair appointment, the headshot, the vent session, and the upgrade dedicated to encouraging you, educating you, and empowering you on your journey. You will not be disappointed with all of the commentary, the humor, and the insight. Get ready to be abundant in wisdom and in strategy. No spiritual warfare is going to take you out. Go ahead and add us to your podcast shuffle. As I just mentioned, you won't be disappointed. Thank you for listening to the Sister Speak Show. Vision, 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 sound, 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 action, 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 create, 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 inspire, 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 impact, 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 evolve, 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 evolve. You are now, you are now, you are now, activate, 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 activate. Welcome back. You are listening to the Culture Climate on the Sister Speak Show. I, of course, I'm your host, Sister Speak. You know, listening to the grandmother cry and know her grandson and to see and actually discern obviously the pain and the trauma and the anxiety and the frustration and just all of the fear that Tyree had that night is heartbreaking you know and as a journalist as a newscaster, if you will, to an extent, and just as a spiritual warfare coach and me being on the battlefield for my brothers and sisters and for righteousness and for what thus saith the Lord, you know, and as an Israelite, because that's who we are, we're not supposed to be doing this to each other, you know, but 
you know, um, seeing these type of clips, I have to try not to cry, you know, I have to try to keep a, 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 I don't want to say a serious emotional, I have to control my emotions to be able to just speak, you know, but sometimes you have to just be real. Like this is really, it's devastating. It's heartbreaking because it just, you want your brother to come home. You want your grandson to come home, your nephew to come home, your son to come home, your 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 homeboy, you know, your brother to come home, your man to come home, your husband to come home, your grandson, nephew. You want them to come home. And every day they walk outside, they're faced with so much in this on this battlefield. The hunt against the black man, so-called black man, the 12 tribes of Israel, the the snares and the traps that are set in place to systematically create corruption and pitfalls for the brothers. And, you know, I don't understand how the brown cop isn't able to relate to what he also is a part of that. Like, you're no different. Like, the the suit doesn't protect you from the fact that you are also a brother and that the snares and all of what I just said is set in place for you too. And that badge doesn't protect you from that because you did get fired. And not only that, It takes away from the ability to pick up the phone and call 911. You don't know who the fuck's going to show up. And then you're on your way. Like I said, you're just stepping outside to go about what should be a daily routine in your peace in, in exercising your rights of having liberties and you know, the pursuit of happiness and according to the Constitution. Um, But really, though, just being able to go and do what you need to do, but just being fucked with, like, nobody wants that. We don't want to just step outside of our house and just be fucked with, harassed by the brown cop. The one who can't operate professionally. And... You're anticipating that you're going to be able to come home, but now you're locked up. Lumped up and locked up. And nobody is going to help you because this whole system right here is flooded with the virus. The virus is... In many people. And so. I will link this to the fact that. You cannot walk around here. In this world. Without. Acknowledging. That the most high God is the most high God. Without acknowledging. His son Jesus the Christ. Yahawashah you cannot. You are a chosen people. I'm speaking to my brothers and sisters. We are a chosen people. And the way that we conduct ourselves in certain positions of power is foul. And we treat each other like shit. And it is a consistent energy and behavior that needs to be checked. And if you are in a position of power, I hope that you do not abuse your power and mistreat your brothers and your sisters. I hope you have not become an overseer. There are 
brown cops right now that are doing shit that they have no business doing and got bodies. Excuse me. Dead bodies. You got bodies. You have bodies and it's been covered up. So you think. The virus and police brutality is that it's captured on camera and there's still debate about it. What the fuck is there to debate? What is there to investigate? We, I mean, you know, it's just like some procedures are bullshit. And wherever there can be a loophole discovered, it will be. But when I look at these niggas that killed Tyree, I see gang gang. I don't see police. I don't see protect and serve. I see with the shit. I see serve that shit. I see set up. I see snares, you know. I, that's what I see. The look in their eyes, not, not a cell of empathy. Basking in apathy. And ready to fuck with some more niggas if you put them back on the force. Slamming people's heads into the gates. And what I didn't like about the news media is that why are you bringing up the fact that they found a gun and something else after this man is given a recount of being harassed and beaten up by someone from the Scorpion unit? That was bad broadcasting. And that's why I don't do mass media because you're not going to have me sit up there and I'm telling a story about some fucked up shit. And by the way, but this nigga was, nah, nah, I'm not going to do that. That was bad. So anyways, you know, the force that they use, the brutality that they use, and there's more people that have not come in, come forth for fear of retaliation. What I also did not like about that coverage was that they blur they well you didn't see the video, but on the video they blurred out the young man's face, but they gave his name. What the fuck? He is in fear of his life for fear of retaliation, but I can see his face, and you you gave his name. You know, it. let me tell you something. Some principalities work hand in hand to perpetuate stereotypes, to perpetuate, you know, um, sensualization. Uh, I think it's sensualization, sensualizing something, um, work together to promote a narrative work together to already have you thinking negatively about something um, or believing that in, in, in this thing, you know, it's just whatever the agenda is and it's all for a bigger picture. You know, it is really the promotion of the negativity and the promotion of what is said about our people whether it be fact or fiction, it's just like, sometimes it's just like wrong time. By the way, just wanted you to know he's also with the shit, even though he got the fuck beat out of him, he did have a gun. No, I, I'm just telling you, I'm going to put it in there because I am not going to let these niggas um, give, give an account um, and, and act like they're innocent. I know somebody had some crack. So what we're going to do is we're going to highlight the fact that he had not one pound. How many pounds should we say he had? 13 pounds of dope. That's what we'll say. You know, it's just like that bullshit. You know, it's just like, I'm not with it. I'm not with it at all. Now, that moving y'all here in the background is me adjusting in the recliner. Okay? Okay. So moving forward, um... The investigation is going forward. Obviously, they've been fired. Duh. And now, do we get the FBI involved? Are we going to fire more people? There's something going on in Memphis in particular. 
there's an energy that is murderous and corrupt. And our people who should be in a righteous mind are terrorizing their own people and are committing acts that suggest that they are untouchable. And that's just not how they should choose to be, but they are. And it's always something on the news about Memphis. And I don't, I don't get it. I don't ever want to be a part of an organization that doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> Let me say that first of all. I don't want to. I don't want to be a part of any organization that says we do what the fuck we want to do. We don't care who it affects, how many bodies are, you know, are laid out. We don't care how many babies are crying, how many mamas are weeping. We don't care what it is. We coming through to rape, pillage, and plunder. We don't care. That's the energy. But that's not just the energy in Memphis. That's just what it is for those who seem to be like they're the devil's children. Under heavy demonic possession. Because in your right mind, you're not going to do that. You're in your left mind. As a matter of fact, your mind, there is no mind. A zombie. No, but real shit though. Uh, the energy of we can't be touched, we can't be stopped, is dangerous. And it's so dangerous that Tyree Nichols lost his life because the brown cop can't operate professionally. It, 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 they are the virus, a part of the virus in police brutality. Rodney King. Rodney King, he was never right after that beating that we saw and although he did live after that, like I said, he wasn't right after. Now, no. It was not at the hand of several brown cops, but I just want to talk about the recovery process and what we saw. If none of us want to be lumped up, none of us want to walk around beaten up. I don't think anybody on this earth, outside of those who are in professional boxing and you know, those type of sports, they sign up to be lumped up. But none of us just in general want to get lumped up. You don't want to be beaten up. You don't want to get your ass kicked. You're not looking to be fucked up and knocked out. You're not looking to be have your bones broken, to not be able to breathe. You're not looking for... To be jumped. You're not looking for unnecessary force to attack you. And if that does occur and you do survive, there are after effects that require intensive healing, not only physical, but Mental, mental healing for not only, you know, for, of course, the victim, but then just for those who witness it. It's traumatizing. So the damage that was done to Rodney King, he was never... The same again. 
Because if you get me on the ground after violently pulling me out of the car, and it's not just one unit, it's several units, several cars, you tell me why you can't. Arrest me properly. You tell me why you got to kick me. What fucking arrest am I resisting? You tell me why I got to be beaten in my head. During this stop. With your police stick. Tell me. Why you got to call for more backup when it's all of y'all with all this power and it's just me? How much fucking fear am I resonating? Am I exuding? What the fuck am I actually doing that makes you, Mr. Cop, fear for your fucking life? What? There's not one cop in this world. I don't give a fuck who it is that would ever be able to answer that question justifiably. Rodney King was never the same. Picked up drinking heavily. The nightmares and the visualizations and the recurring, just reliving that over and over again. And then, you know, therapy, going to a therapist is stigmatized. So I don't know if he got counseling or not for that, but I know he needed it. Well, we needed it seeing it. Like we saw our brother get his ass whooped on TV. And it's just like at some point, What is the procedure to make a public servant immediately cease and desist from unlawful behavior and from unlawfully protecting and serving the community? And and at what, how do we stop them from doing it? Because it should not be that a public servant is telling us to step back when they work for us. Now, I understand that we are not supposed to, you know, impede an investigation. We're not supposed to interfere with an investigation. I understand. What I'm saying is, but we ain't the only ones who's supposed to be keeping the law. And we're not the public servants. So how do we, once again, dismantle them immediately have them immediately cease and desist from what they're doing because the fear that they perpetuate by always putting their hands on their gun threatening to kill us threatening to threatening to perpetuate more violence in order to get us not to exercise our rights why are they able to violate our rights and they work for us Hmm. A lot of it has to do with the speed of their actions. They move in real quick. They do things real quick. And while you're trying to exercise your rights, next thing you know, you're getting kicked in the fucking face. That's what, I mean, you know, we got to round these brown cops up all over. And ship they ass to an island and never pick them up again. Just ship they ass to an island. Real talk. We can ship them to an island in the middle of the Bermuda Triangle. And there is no island in the Bermuda Triangle. But that's where they need to go. With that fucking demonic spirit. I'm appalled by 
the death of Tyree Nichols, as many of us are. And that did not have to happen. I don't like the fraternal energy. I don't like that gang gang wicked shit. I don't like when dark skinned men hate dark skinned men. I don't like the fact that dark skinned men hate dark skin. I hate corrupt entities, excuse me, corrupt principalities. I hate when corruption is glorified. I hate when righteousness is horrified. I hate that you can see something on video and still try to play dumb. I hate how there is a disproportion of fair firing when it comes to overall police brutality. I hate the fact that there are many police reports all over the world that are wrong. I hate the fact that there are brown cops who have lied on their brothers and that there are brothers behind bars based on bad brown cops. There are brothers in jail, in prison right now, at the hand of a wicked scorpion-like unit, energy. And that is unjust. And those are our people doing it to our people. Why the fuck can't we be cool? Why can't we be cool? Why do we hate the skin that we're in? Why do we land assaults? Excuse me. Why do we launch attacks on our very own? We are a chosen people and we act like dingleberries. We act like we ain't shit. We treat each other like shit. And got the fucking nerve to be protesting and marching. This has got to stop. Why do we hate each other so much? It is a curse. It is a curse. It is a generational curse. And I can't make you have a moral compass. That is something you better hope you have. If you are a shrug the shoulder type of person, you can't be a part of my tribe. You can't be on the front line trying to do this type of bold work because there's a lot of punches that come with me speaking this truth. But when you come from a lineage of Judith, you ain't, you can't be no sucker out here in these spiritual streets. I choose, I accept my missions. Why do our people hate each other? Why do bad brown cops exist? Why do we haze? You know, I am hoping that every brother makes it home every day. And I hope that every brown cop is exposed and fired, period. And that there will be justice for those who had to encounter the scorpion for those who have been stung by a scorpion when you were just trying to 
go to the store. And the effects of that sting and how it has caused so much pain for your families. My gosh. We don't like each other. And that's what they want. They want us to hate each other. Kill each other without any remorse or regard. That man begged for his life. He was on the ground. And y'all niggas took him to another location and you beat him. Was that a ritual? Because the encounters that they had. Yeah. Yeah. sacrificed him and that comes with a cost I want you to think twice if you're thinking about becoming going on the police force are you going to be a police officer you're going to protect and serve you're going to follow protocol you're going to make sure that you do the right thing are you going to be somebody where somebody can look and say okay that's a good police officer right there or are you going to be with the fucking shit you're going to be a cop Huh? You're going to join the force and not operate professionally. I'm just saying, though, like, before you decide to do it, you better check yourself and ask yourself why you want to become one. Why? Just why? And are you willing to turn your back and, and hide righteousness and exchange righteousness for corruption? Because it's a be quiet organization. You need to think before you join. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <clears throat> I thank you. Excuse me. Hold on. I do thank you so much for listening to The Culture Climate, Raising the Temperature in Controversial Conversations. I am your host, Sister Speak. The time has been well spent on the Sister Speak show, syndicated on Amazon Alexa and Sonos. Yes, indeed, with eight segments guaranteed to be the flavor in your ear. Please add us to your podcast shuffle. I thank you for being a wonderful listening audience. I do return to sender all spell work, voodoo, and black magic. It has an adverse effect immediately in the practitioner and the sender's bosom. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God, my rock, in whom I take refuge. My shield and the horn of my salvation. My strong hold. Yes, indeed. I want to thank you all for being warriors. I thank you for being, you know, going with me in this conversation. I thank you for being wise. I want to encourage you to continue to be warriors. I want to encourage you to continue to seek victory. I want you to understand that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. I want to encourage you to pray three times a day. I want to encourage you to praise the most high God continuously. And I want you to continue to Prosper and press forward. Please be safe. Please keep your head on the swivel. Please p- pray for a hedge of protection. Don't get caught slipping out here without a head of protection. And that would be the Most High God and His Son, Jesus the Christ, Yahweh Shai. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for listening to. The Culture Climate on the Sister Speak Show. You are listening to The Culture Climate on the Sister Speak Show, raising the temperature in controversial conversations. There are no limits or boundaries when it comes to exposing and investigating the truth. There must be solutions for the pollutions in our village. 
Thank you for being a wonderful listening audience. I have another episode that I will be putting out shortly for you all to enjoy. It's another culture climate. The It's another episode for the culture climate. I know you all are going to like this one as well. And like I said, please be safe. I love you all. And we will definitely converse again. The devil is already defeated. Warriors mount 